Hello everyone. In this session, we'll continue looking at the XML composite control. Uh, but before we start, uh, I wanted to make a few changes. Uh, so our XML composite control had three properties, title, value, and previous value. And it also had an event called next, uh, and uh, one of the output param was uh, value. So I felt that the word value was being overused, so I changed it a little bit. Uh, so the properties now has title, second value, and first value, uh, instead of value and previous value. And then the output param for the next event is going to be next value. Uh, so first value and second value would be one and one, and the next value would be two in this case. Uh, so let's uh, look at what the code changes need to be made. Uh, so here I changed the value uh, to first value and second value, and also the get param to next value as well. And I think one other thing was, uh, I think I had this uh, uh, incorrect, uh, so I had the fix this one also. Uh, so I think I had it at, as SAP slash M instead of com slash SAP. So I fixed this as well. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so in this session, let's go ahead and create the control itself. Uh, so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called controls uh, because that's where our control is going to reside. If you look at the name module here, com slash SAP, my controls, controls Fibonacci. So we'll create a folder called controls and then we'll create our Fibonacci control inside of that. And uh, the control itself is a JavaScript object, so I'll create a file called Fibonacci.js. And the control uh, itself, it uh, extends the XML composite uh, from SAP. Uh, so let's uh, start creating it, SAP UI define. And uh, this, is, uh, this takes uh, an array first. Uh, so here we want to include the SAP slash UI slash core slash XML composite. Uh, so our uh, control uh, derives from this, extends this, uh, uh, this class. And we'll also be using SAP slash M slash button. So let's include that here as well. And let me do this uh, function here. And Let's uh, create a function. And this function uh, is going to have XML composite, uh, this module, and also the button class. And let's uh, have uh, the use, oops. And we'll use uh, use strict uh, so that uh, uh, we don't accidentally use uh, variables that we didn't want to use it. And uh, this is going to return XML composite dot extend. And this is just a boilerplate code, so you can pretty much copy and paste, which is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just typing it from my notepad here: controls dot controls dot Fibonacci. And uh, here, and here is where the fun begins. Uh, this is where we start creating the control itself. And what we can do is uh, first we want to do the metadata section. Uh, so let's start with the metadata section itself. And in the metadata section, uh, we have three properties. Um, so the let's uh, create the metadata property. And it's going to have uh, three properties. Uh, so inside of it, we also have another thing called properties. And this uh, is where we define our three properties. Uh, the first property, uh, if we go back to our uh, slide, uh, it's going to be title. The second property is uh, second value. And then we have first value. Uh, so let's go here. Uh, so we'll define title. Now title has uh, is of type string and it is uh, will also give it a default value and this is optional uh, but we'll go ahead and give it anyways we'll call this uh, a Fibonacci series so if uh, the consuming application doesn't provide a, a title property then this uh, default value will be used uh, so this is our uh, first property, the title. Now let's go ahead and copy this couple of times uh, because we are going to have uh, two more properties. And uh, so the next one is going to be first value. So let's go ahead and call this first value. 
and this is going to be of type integer. So this takes uh, any value here. And the default value, let's uh, give this a default value of uh, 1. And uh, the second, the third one is going to be second value. And this is also going to be of type integer. And the default value, if you don't provide a default value, then this is going to be 1 as well. Um, and this is uh, our property section. Now, in our metadata, we can also define the event. Uh, so we also have events. Uh, we have, uh, let's uh, have a look. So we have one event next, and the output parameter of that event is going to be next value. Uh, so let's go ahead and define it. Uh, so events, and then the name of the event. In our case, this is going to be next. And the, the parameters that we are going to output uh, so we'll have a parameter section, and the parameter that we are going to output is going to be next value. Uh, so we'll put in next value here, and this is going to be of uh, type integer. Okay, so we have the metadata section uh, pretty much taken care of. Now let's uh, see what else we have to implement. Uh, so we have uh, the the event itself we haven't implemented, like uh, how when the event gets fired and so on, and the method also we need to implement. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement the method first. Uh, so we have a method called reset that we are going to implement, and reset takes uh, two arguments, a comma b, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take the value of a, what happened here? We're going to take the value of A and then assign it to uh, the first value and take the value of B and assign it to the second value. Uh, so SAP automatically provides uh, default uh, getters and setters. Uh, so we can use that. So this dot set first value. So when you have a property called first value, uh, there's automatically a setter and a getter provided by SAP. Uh, so we do set first value and then A and happening here and then what we'll do is uh, this dot set second value and then we'll give the value of B okay so now we have the method also implemented um, so let me go ahead and uh, say comma here uh, and then what else do we need to implement? Uh, so we need to fire this event. Uh, so let's uh, have uh, a method that will fire this next event. Uh, so what we'll do is anytime the user clicks on a button, so we have brought in a button. Uh, so whenever uh, the user clicks on the button, uh, so we'll fire the next event. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is uh, on handle press. Actually, we'll come to this later. Let's first go ahead and create the UI for this. Uh, now, for the UI for this, uh, instead of using the renderer function, I'm simply going to create a fragment, and that will have my UI for this. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a UI. So here, I'll call this uh, Fibonacci. So the UI has to have the same name. Uh, and then it's going to have control.xml as the extension for this. Uh, so go ahead and create this file. And let's uh, create this uh, uh, this uh, UI. Uh, so I'm going to uh, copy and paste some code. And I'll kind of explain what this UI does. Uh, so this is just a fragment. Uh, so you're pretty much uh, aware of this. So this is just boilerplate. The first and the last line is just boilerplate. Um, and then we have a panel here. Uh, and then we have a header text. This is a property of the panel. And this syntax is something that I wanted to point to you. So this is how you would access the property of the control uh, using dollar this. Uh, so this is a special syntax that allows you to access the property of the control. So in our control, we have uh, the title property. Uh, so in the panel, I want to set the title here. Uh, so I access it using this uh, curly brace dollar this uh, syntax. And I can access the title. And then I have a V box. And here I'm having the previous value. And again, I use the same syntax to access the first value. And then I have the current value. And I provide the current value. So this needs to be second value um, because, um, OK. 
so I have the first value. Uh, the current value is going to be the second value. And then I'm, I have the class. And then I also have a button. And when I click on this button, um, I want to, uh, I want to uh, invoke or I want to fire off this event, uh, the next event. Uh, so let me have this on handle press. Uh, so I, I have to uh, implement this on handle press. And if I go here, uh, I can do this on handle press. Um, and in on handle press, um, it's uh, going to be a function. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called new value. And this new value is going to be the sum of first value and uh, the second value. Uh, so again, SAP provides this uh, convenient uh, getters and setters for you. Uh, so you can simply use uh, uh, this dot get first value and uh, this dot get second value. Uh, and then uh, what we can do is uh, um, we also want once in the Fibonacci series, uh, once I uh, get the second value, I want to change first value to the next value and the second value to the, the next value also. Uh, so you get what I mean. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to set the first value and I'm going to set it to this dot get second value so that when the user calls next again, he gets the next uh, sum. And then this dot second value is going to be this new value. So I've uh, gotten the new value. Now I need to uh, fire off this uh, next event and also provide this value. So this dot fire event is going to fire off uh, the next event. So I'm, I have to provide next here. So this is going to fire the next event. And the parameter that I want to pass um, is going to be next value. And the value itself is going to be new value here. Okay, so I think we are all set. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use the ES6 so that I don't see this uh, error message. So I go into project, project settings, and I can go into JavaScript uh, here. I can go into here, and I can say ES6, and I can set this value to true. Uh, and I'll save this, uh, so I shouldn't see this uh, error message now. Um, so it should go away if I close it, maybe close this, open it again. Yeah, hopefully I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it now. Um, so I think we have it all set. So we have created the control, um, and we have the consuming application that's consuming it as well. Uh, so let's run it and see. Uh, make sure that it is working first uh, before we move it to a library. So uh, I'm running the index.html, and uh, let's uh, make sure that this uh, control is working first. Um, OK, we are running into some issues. So let's see what the problem is. So I'll hit F12 to debug. Um, so let's see what the issue is. Uh, it says this dot by ID. So if I go to my app controller, uh, yeah, so there is only this dot by ID. And again here, uh, this dot by ID. Uh, so there's no underscore. So um, now let's see what happens. Um, so we should see the control. OK, so the control is showing up here. Um, so this is the one instantiated by the view. So we have the control twice. Uh, let's see uh, when we do get next number in sequence, it's supposed to give us the next number. Uh, there is an exception, this dot get property. So let's look at the control. Uh, OK, so this one, I didn't put the brackets here. OK, so this should work now. Let's see, make sure it works. Um, so uh, we should get the next number in the sequence. So two is correct. And also the, you can see the previous value, current value changed. Uh, so that's good. It's uh, doing it uh, here for the view. Uh, let's see for the controller. So the next value should be 16. Yes, it is 16 and it's uh, 25, so on, which is good. Let's uh, do the reset the series, which is good. We are resetting it to 5 and 10, 50 and 100. Uh, so we have the composite control that is working now. Um, in the next session, what we'll do is uh, we'll take this composite control and put it into a library. And then our consuming application will use it from the library. Because right now, uh, the control is inside of this application itself. So only this application can 
consume this uh, this control and there's no point in creating a reusable control if it's only going to be used by one application so we'll create a library and then uh, put this control inside of that library okay see you in the next session